Okay, so when you open Scratch Desktop, this is what you get to see. Um, I'll just talk you through some of the tabs and what everything does. So the, the over here where the, the little picture of the Scratch Cat is, this is basically the stage area. So this is where things go on. And uh, later on, if we want to see it on a bigger stage, we just hit this full screen and we get the, the cat and whatever animations and things that we've created will appear on this larger scale um, screen. Um, down below here are where we have sprites. So the sprites are the characters that we have that we put onto our stage area. Uh, we can hide them if we don't want to see them. So taking the little uh, eye off here or switching on hides them on here so we can have more than one. And what we can do is we can attach code to our sprites so that they can do things. And this is the area where we're going to drop our code. And over here on the left are all the different types of code blocks we can use. So you can see as you click through, you get the different categories of code, or you can just scroll through them this way, and we drag them out. We'll see that in a minute now. Over here, we have what's called the backdrop. So we can go into backdrops, click on there, and we can choose one. So if we want a blue sky, we'll choose that. And this is now the backdrop that's going into our stage area. Now I probably should mention, if you'll see here, the X and Y coordinates, we can move our sprite anywhere on this in the stage, and it's represented then in the X, Y coordinates. So we can actually later on program to go to certain positions using X, Y coordinates. Um, if we didn't want to use this particular sprite, we can bring in a new sprite. So I'm going to bring in another sprite. I'm going to choose one from theirs. Now we can go by categories, um, or we can just choose um, generally. I'm going to go for the ball one. Um, the ball's on the, on the stage area now. I'm not going to use the sprite cat. I'm actually going to delete it. So there's, that's gone. There's my little ball. Um, and that gives us an advantage to look at a few other things here. So costumes. If you click on costumes, you'll see that a lot of the different sprites have got multiple costumes. So you see this ball has got basically five different costumes. So ball A, ball B, and so on. You've also got the opportunity here within this uh, editing area to change things about it so if you want to make your own sprites or if you want to edit sprites that already exist you can copy them and change the colors and do whatever you want to do with them you can create your own which is pretty cool but the idea of, of having different um, costumes is that you can give a sprite the ant that the kind of um, some special effects or you can make it look like it's moving so for instance if you had a, a character that had a few different positions you could make it look like he was running or jumping or something by changing the costumes and we can use code to do that as well now the other thing here to mention is sounds so we can put sound effects onto whatever we're doing so if we wanted to make this um, this ball look like it was bouncing and while it was bouncing we wanted it to play a noise we can basically come in the same way we can choose a sound from the sound library you can see there's loads of different ones there you can uh, bring one of those in and you can click on to test it so that's a dog barking and we can include those these bits of code we can also do things to them and edit them in the same way that we can with the other objects okay so let's have a look at something very basic so I'm going to bring the ball over here and I'm going to bring in this bit of code I'm just going to drag it over now in the first instance if you just click a piece of code it will work so if I click on this one watch what happens to the little ball you can see it moves in increments of 10. So if I did wanted it to go into a bigger movement, I could change that to maybe 100. Now, if I click on it, it moves a much bigger distance. If I wanted to bring the same bit of code out again, but this time I'm going to make that minus 100. I, I expect you can guess what's going to happen. If I press that one, it goes in the other direction. So it's very simple to start messing around with bits of code. Uh, if we don't want a bit of code, we just throw it away. If we want to make something happen when we click, now you'll notice up here we've got a flag for go and a flag for stop. So we can create animations that work when we hit the start or we hit the stop. How do we do that? Well, we're going to bring in a control um, one. So we're going to get one. No, we're not. We're going to go for a when clicked event. So if I bring that in, you'll see as soon as my code blocks get close together, they want to lock like Lego. So that one's locked together now. So basically that's saying Let's move this back over here, that when I click the flag, or if I click on here, it's going to operate. So I go to full screen now, click my flag, and there's my ball moving. So it's been activated by that click control. Now there's other controls that we can put on there to make things happen, but essentially what you're going to be doing is you're going to be bringing out sprites, and then you're going to be attaching code to them, and you're going to be making things happen in the stage area. We can have 
more than one sprite in a stage area and we can make them do different things. They can have their own code attached to them. So we're just going to look at something really simple for the moment. We're going to look at how we can create a square. So I'm going to get rid of this code I've got to start with by chucking it away. It doesn't matter which of these windows you chuck it in. As soon as you put it into the code window, it disappears. You'll also notice that there's an extra one down here which says Add Extensions. If I click Add Extensions, it jumps me to this other page. And there's things being added to this all the time. But basically, if we wanted to have um, additional bits of code, so say, for instance, we're not doing it yet, but when we use micro bits, if we wanted to control micro bits with Scratch, we could add this and that would end up being in the same code window. You'll see there's one here called pen. Now, if when you get yours installed, you don't see pen, all you need to do is to go here, click on the pen one, and it will install it as an extra set of code. So we're going to use the pen one now. I'm going to bring my pen one out. I'm going to drag this one out that says arrays, and I'm going to drag this one out that says pen down. Now, what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to draw something. So at the moment, if I um, pen down, and then I move, I should find that I can make it draw something. So I'm going to change maybe the 10 to 50 and watch what happens. If I hit pen down and move, it draws me a line. Every time I hit that down, it's drawing me another 50. If I hit erase all, it gets rid of my line. Okay, very, very basic, very straightforward. I'm going to add something into that now. So you're going to see straight away something called a repeat. So I'm going to put my repeat loop in here. And I'm going to drag that over here. I'm not going to repeat it 10 times. I'm going to repeat it four times. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my steps to 100. And I'm going to bring in something called a wait command. I'm going to use this one here, which basically is going to be for, I'm going to make it something like 0 0.4 of a second, just so we can see a little bit of what happens. And I'm going to make this thing turn by 90 degrees. So I don't want to turn 15 degrees. I'm going to turn 90 degrees. So I'm going to go in there and I'm going to change that. I expect you can guess what's going to happen now. So basically, if I hit this bit of code, it should draw me a square. And there you go. And if I obviously don't want that any longer, I can erase it. And if I can add any other code to that to make things happen, uh, like the click code and so on, or put some sound effects in so it makes a noise when it ch changes direction or any of those sorts of things, we could do that. But that's the basic essentials of how you use Scratch. So you're using code, you're using sprites, you're using a, a background or a backdrop as they call it. We can use XY coordinates for positioning. We can change or edit any of those things. We can add costumes to sprites. We can add sound effects into sprites. Uh, the only thing we haven't mentioned is how we actually save and open. So literally, we go to file, we save to your computer. And there's my example one so far. I'll call this one uh, demo. So I can chuck my demo in there. That saves it now as an SB3 file. Next time round, if I want to load up, I literally go file and I load from my computer and I go back and I open whatever file I want and continue with it. It's as simple as that. Good luck.